Over the last couple of weeks, my New Orleans Pelicans, they have been engaging in a social media battle with Stephen A. Smith. Last month, Stevie, he showed the ESPN audience that not only does he not watch the NFL, he also hasn't been watching the NBA, the one league that is supposed to be his area of expertise, the one league that he has spent his entire media career covering. Now, of course... ESPN, they are not paying Stevie $12 million a year to have actual knowledge on sports. The worldwide leader in Woke, they pay him because he's entertaining. And when the situation calls for it, Stevie, he is willing to identify as a parrot. When executives at ESPN are feeling guilty about their white privilege and they need the face of the network to express his fake outrage over mythical racism, Stephen A. Smith is more than willing to cooperate. How do you think he landed his recurring role on General Hospital? This dude has been one of the highest paid actors at ESPN for decades now. Last month, Stevie once again criticized Zion Williamson over his weight. Now, this was a legit criticism at the beginning of the NBA season, but when Stevie repeated this criticism in February... All it did was prove that he does not consistently watch the NBA, or he doesn't consistently watch the Pelicans. When the Pelican social media account embarrassed Stephen A. Smith by putting together a compilation of his athletic highlights, showing that he is a huge embarrassing failure, I kept seeing the same warning on social media, mainly on Twitter. The Pelicans should tread carefully with Stephen A. Smith. He is all-powerful. He has influence. He has the power to to destroy you! (laughs) You know, initially, I thought this was preposterous. How in the hell is Stephen A. Smith going to destroy my Pelicans? But then I remembered Skip Bayless. There was a time, and it went on for a long time, when Skip Bayless was the most powerful voice in sports media. He might have been hated. He might have said outlandish things a lot of times, and he might have been wrong. But the only thing that mattered was people were watching. People were paying attention. Not only was Skip Bayless influential on television, he was also influential behind the scenes. This dude is responsible, I think, for saving the media careers of both Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp. Hey, it's me, Shay Shay! When ESPN rehired Stevie in the early part of the 2010s, most people at ESPN, they refused to work with him. He was persona non grata. During commercial breaks when his male colleagues would hold each other tightly in the firm grip of the woke cug, Stevie, he was left out. Remember that scene in Office Space where... They are passing the pieces of cake around the office. I think they were celebrating Bill Lumberg's birthday. Milton keeps passing the cake, and by the time it's his turn to receive a piece of cake, all the cake is gone. That's how it was for Stephen A. Smith at ESPN, except they weren't passing around cake. They were serving the grilled wiener. At the time, Skip Bayless, he was going through a rotating panel of debate partners on first take. Some days, he would be competing with the face of disgrace, Jamel Hill. Other days, he would debate Stephen A. or some other random doofus who was working at ESPN at the time. Skip, He went to management at ESPN. He demanded that Stephen A. Smith be his full-time partner in the butt bongo. That one decision from Skip Bayless probably saved the mainstream sports media career of Stephen A. Smith. If it wasn't for Skip Bayless, he would probably still be a beat reporter for one of the dumps in the WNBA dump. He did the same thing for the grown man that calls himself Shay Shay. September of 2010, CBS, they temporarily removed Shay Sharp from their NFL pregame show. A woman down in Georgia, she was accusing Shay of assault. A couple of years later, CBS fires Shannon Sharp and replaced him with Tony Gonzalez. Well, Casey, that's simply not true. CBS just decided not to renew his contract. Um, yeah, that's a polite way of saying you're fired. Two years later, Skip Bayless shocked the media by choosing to leave ESPN to join FS1. Now, at the time, FS1, this was a completely new network. Skip Bayless left an established network at ESPN to essentially join a startup company. Who did he select to be his partner? Shannon Sharp. If I remember correctly... I don't think Shannon Sharp was even working in the media when Skip Bayless chose him. There is a reason, though, I'm telling you all this. Friday afternoon, 
Godawful Announcing published a report with an update on how Skip Bayless is performing in the ratings at FS1. February 27th of last year, when the marriage between Shay and A was in the midst of falling apart, Undisputed drew 179,000 viewers. Now, that was around their typical average, and even though that number is absolutely atrocious, it is considerably better than what Skip Bayless is averaging today. This past Tuesday, February 27th, Undisputed drew 50,000 viewers. 50,000! For the longest time, the media, they would compare ratings between Undisputed and First Take, but that is no longer a valid comparison. That would be like comparing ratings in women's college basketball to ratings in the WNBA dump. 50,000, that represents a record low in this new format that Skip Bayless copied last summer from First Take, where instead of Skip being monogamous and having one debate partner, he decided to copy Stevie A and become a polygamist. There is a rotating panel of so-called stars debating Skip Bayless on Undisputed. Rachel Nichols, Michael Irvin, Richard Sherman, until he decided to get drunk on the booze while forgetting how to use his Uber app and drove his drunk ass straight to jail. The only reason, the only reason Skip Bayless didn't set record low ratings this past Tuesday is because ratings were lower when FS1 initially launched. And the reason ratings were lower back then, people didn't have access to the network. Ratings for Undisputed are so low, Skip Bayless is no longer making the charts at FS1. The U.S. television database, it's a site, they rank shows for each network. Skip Bayless, he doesn't make the rankings at FS1. Mountain West Basketball, more appealing than Skip Bayless. Arena Motocross Nationals, something called the PPA Tour, Bassmaster Elite, which I assume is one of those painfully boring shows where some dude is standing on a boat in the middle of some lake waiting for a fish to nibble on his worm. That is how bad it's gotten for Skip Bayless. This dude went from the pinnacle of sports media to not being able to compete with Fred Fishstone. Question is, what the hell happened here? How did this happen? We can only speculate. We can only speculate. There are a lot of variables that go into ratings. Some people might think that FS1 as a network is in decline, but that's just not true. December and January were two of the best months since they launched eight years ago. I think Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp are partially responsible for the decline of Skip Bayless. And you don't have to take my word for it. Casey always comes with the proof. Back in September, it seemed like Shay and A made it their personal mission to destroy the media career of Skip Bayless. They were kicking this dude while he was down. The same dude that saved their media careers. I went through my archives this morning to put together a compilation of clips of Stephen A. and Shannon Sharp from September of last year. One week, Stevie would be invited on Club Shay Shay and they would talk about Skip Bayless. The next week, Shay would be invited to Club AA where once again, they would talk about Skip Bayless. Watch this for yourself, but I want you to pay close attention to something. Pay attention to the narrative, the perception that Shay and A were creating. Watch for yourself. Why would I be jealous of Tom Brady? In all of my TV career, that probably was the I, I, re, I remember going home, calling my sister. I called my brother. It took a lot. It, it took a lot for me not to not to put my hands on him. Mm. It actually did. And how much trouble was the relationship between you two in at that particular moment? A lot of that is my fault because there were times that led up to that that I felt that shots were taken and I let it go and he felt that he could go over the top in that situation. Once one partner has no respect for the other, the other partner then in turn loses respect for said partner. Then I think it's only a matter of time because I felt in that moment he had lost all respect for me. He had no respect for me. I wanted the world to know that you were wanted. I wanted the world, I didn't want you to be in a situation where the sports world looked at you and said, what do you do? He must have done something. Mm -hmm. Persona non grata. Yep. Blah, 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 yep. blah, blah. So I said, I said, if he ends up here, he ends up here. The honchos know I want him. But more importantly than that, this is a brother that I think has done a lot of good work on television that has helped our community. Mm -hmm. And as a result, 
it's incumbent upon me because of the perch that I sit on to let them know right. he's wanted. Right. Don't cut him off because that's what they did to me in 2009. They cut me off and left me for dead, bro. Did you catch it? What perception were they creating here? Maybe it's just me, but from my perspective, they portrayed Shannon Sharp as the ultimate victim and Skip Bayless was portrayed as the aggressor or maybe even the oppressor. Now, to my knowledge, Skip Bayless never publicly responded to this, and I think that one mistake was detrimental to his career. I didn't realize it at the time, and maybe Skip Bayless didn't realize it either, but Shay and A, they turned the media and the audience against Skip Bayless. And with Skip not defending himself, we were only receiving one side of the story. In addition to that, I think this had a devastating impact on Skip Bayless personally. In the past, Skip Bayless, he would capture the attention of the mainstream media by going off on one of his legendary rants. When is the last time you have seen that from Skip Bayless? When is the last time you have seen one of his clips going viral? Since September, it seems like Skip Bayless has toned down the rhetoric. He's toned down the criticism. Now, I don't watch Undisputed. I'm prepping my own videos when the show is on the air. But over the last few months, I have had several people reach out to me who watch Undisputed every day. And every one of them tells me the same thing. Skip Bayless is not the same. This is pure speculation on my part. But I think Stephen A and the grown man who calls himself Shay... I think they broke Skip Bayless. The constant bashing throughout the month of September, I think it destroyed his confidence. The Skip Bayless of 10, maybe 15 years ago, he would have went scorched earth. He would have opened his show by ruthlessly attacking Shay and A. Instead, what did he do? He cowered in the corner and let them repeatedly hit him with knockout punches. After we got home from dinner late last night, I made myself a bedtime glass of Jim Beam and sat in my recliner to scroll through Twitter. Came across a tweet from Skip Bayless complimenting LeBron James for scoring 40,000 points. Now, this is the second time this week that Skip Bayless has been complimentary of LeBron James. Wednesday night when the Lakers came back from being down 20 points to beat the Clippers, Skip Bayless praised LeBron for having a great game. Um, who in the fuck is this guy? This is not the Skip Bayless that I remember. Sure, he has always had an unhealthy obsession with LeBron James, but rarely, rarely has Skip Bayless went out of his way to compliment LeBron. If anything, he goes out of his way to criticize him anytime LeBron does something great. It just reeks of inauthenticity. And when you're not authentic, People are not going to watch you. I think Skip Bayless was afraid to respond to Shay and A because he didn't want it to be twisted into a racial issue. But his failure to respond, it could cost him his media career. These ratings are not sustainable. Fox cannot pay Skip Bayless six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars a year for ratings that can't compete with Fred Fishstone. Skip Bayless lost credibility with a significant portion of the audience, and once you lose your credibility, damn near impossible to get it back. But give me your thoughts on this. Skip Bayless, once again, sets another milestone for record low ratings. I think his media career is over. I just don't see any way that Skip Bayless can come back from this. Looking back at it now, I think his biggest mistake was his failure to respond to the attacks from Shay and A. But what's your reason? Why is Skip Bayless struggling to draw and maintain an audience? And do you think his media career is over? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate each one of you guys and your continued support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.